Welcome to We Have Issues. I'm Anthony. And I am Stevie Wildcard. Every week, Stevie Wildcard and I get together and we do our best to... to Steven, Steven, give me an X-Man. Any X-Man. We do our best every week to grab our issues like a playing card and ignite them with kinetic fury just to watch them blow up into dust. Oof. We Remy LeBeau our issues and problems every single week. But really what we do is we try to overcome the various obstacles that get in our way and distractions while we're trying to make freaking comic books. Uh, most recently, we've been working on a supernatural action horror comedy book called Deathless. We're in issue three now. We haven't launched the Kickstarter yet, but we are, we're, working, we're working through it so we get like... God, we're, we want to get the whole book done before we launch this Kickstarter, right? Or are we trying yeah, to? Yeah, we're trying to. We're trying to change the pace up a little bit, like because there's always so much work to be done. Like usually, I think with with both with all all the previous Kickstarters, played again maybe the longest stretch. Previously but, on, we yeah. have issues. We've launched first. We we, we launched a, a, our first book was a semi autobiographical time travel graphic novel musical, and we did it. We launched on Kickstarter. We were freaking successful. We were like, oh my god, we're gonna be amazing. We're gonna be we're real comic book careers didn't happen we, we, we like people liked it people liked the book we like the book we're super proud of it it's like, number one in historical fiction for a little while there you can find it on amazon and kindle and all that stuff but but we, we we weren't famous yet we're like oh no we're still not we're still have to work our jobs crap crap and i bet a lot of you are in that position so then we were like we were like what do we do what do we do what do we do um win the lottery didn't happen that didn't happen so what we did instead as we launched another book where it started a series where like maybe the graphic novella wasn't it it's okay. It's not the thing that's going to make us, you know, be to, to do this permanently or like as a career specifically. So we were like comic series. We got this. We launched Deathless. So we did Deathless issue one. Steven, we we're super successful with issue one. I felt so good about it. We put it out. People seem to really love it. Still not famous, Steven. We're still not. We're not permanent. We're still not famous and we're really not good at like profiting super well from our endeavors yeah yeah so 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 it turns out turns out you and i don't we're not so concerned with money as much as we want to be like we're like we're, we're very much like the wedding singer situation where it's like money i have a little I would like some more like what can you do about this and we're not we're not great with it okay we're mm -hmm. trying though um but we are not deterred by our lack of funds. What we, you know, <laughs> if you gonna, think failure gets us down, <laughs> oh boy, are you wrong? So, so yeah. So Stephen and I have been trying to make comic books for the last twenty years, and we did fail for a long time. We, you know, we let our issues get in the way. We let our daily lives kind of like, be, like overwhelm us, and like you know, kind of throw our uh, our ambition to the side, and our dreams kind of fell to the wayside. Beside, you know, like families and jobs and that sort of stuff. Now, Stephen. Now, most more recently, we're like, we got this. We got this. Like, failure is not an option because you know we're just gonna keep we keep trying. We're just gonna keep going. You know, you can't do. It's like you you only fail when you quit, right? So, mm -hmm. so I think to an extent, Stephen and I have succeeded way more than we failed at this point, right? Like, mm, like absolutely like in our endeavors as uh, comic book creators and you know the, the, the podcasters and such. We're trying to to craft these careers, uh, and right now we're working through issue three. Soon, we're like at some point soon, we're gonna launch a Kickstarter for issue three, and hopefully, you you show up for that and help us propel us to that next step. So then maybe, just maybe, issue three is the one that kickstarts this <laughs> career for good, and we can quit our dang jobs. Uh, although, of course, we have other irons on the fires, or you know, we have we have other things going on as well we're going to make a movie and we have we have other things to talk about but but today we're going to focus on the comic book stuff because steven you're blowing my mind you're blowing my flipping mind <laughs> steven um every week we start by talking about you know what 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 we did what what we did this week and what we accomplished steven what did you accomplish this week a whole nother page with our titular 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 how do you say it's titular it was definitely titular no our titular it's titular i heard titular which by the a, way <laughs> if you're interested in that if that's selling you on this podcast if titty chiller is the thing that's our next book our next book next time on anthony <laughs> Stephen anthony make a comic book Stephen, listen, 
<laughs> Listen to me. All right. <laughs> there's someone, there's a, there's a couple. They're not working out. The man, super misogynistic, terrible person, like awful, awful person. He's like, you're a frigid, cold wench of a blah, blah, blah. And she's like, how dare you call me these words? And he kicks her out of the house and she, she's distraught and dismayed. And she, she, she falls to her knees, but she's welcomed, Stephen, welcomed <laughs> by her ancestors. Her ancestors lift her chin and say, no, not us. Not us. <laughs> we're not this we're not we don't do this you may be cold but only because uh revenge is a dish <laughs> best served cold and they, he, they they turn her around giving her powers uh, in, in her powers. heart in her heart ice, she has an ice cold heart ice cold heart titties are chilled to the bone Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> so she she turns and she destroys that man who sent her off. Bobby the- Drake ain't got shit on me. <laughs> Coming this fall, titty chillers. Um, no, so the titular <laughs> character, yeah. So the titular character you drew, um, dude, this week you you drew a page that's that I've been excited for you to draw since like writing it. It was one of those things where like as I was I was like conceiving it, it started as like the most boring page in the world where I was just like, yeah, they're talking, they're having a conversation, and then I was like. But what if she's huge? <laughs> <laughs> she's ginormous. Did I get his scream? Because, like, I thought it was funny. Like, the... Ah, like, like, the screaming yeah. at the camera almost. Like... It's so good. I It's so good. So, for those of you who haven't been following, uh, you know, our, our character Deathless is, is uh, sort of going from uh one big bad to the next <laughs> like in a sort of video he's game. doing he's doing his best to mega man his way through the bad guys however the power he may have received from the previous one isn't useful against this this robot master so yeah so exactly so now he's facing this leviathanistic like enormous goddess of a creature you know this who he has to find a way to stop uh, apparently and it's uh it's not it's not going in his favor so far um but yeah so it's 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 so exciting to see these pages because they they look so epic and you're doing such a good job with like the scope of it all and keeping it like just super dynamic for how conversational it is and i just like mm-hmm. i love it because that's where like i was like but not to interrupt but when i got to the writing of that page i'm like what does galactus look like when he's just chilling in space i was like looking up like just like some ideas you know yeah. i didn't even end up using any like galactus references but like i wanted to like because like when i think galactus i think of like this being that's just bigger than planets and like i couldn't even imagine the scope you know but like no, just, like it really is like i mean we can imagine it drawing it but as far as seeing it, it's inconceivable you know like unfathomable like i can i try to picture it and i can i feel like it's like one of those things where you're like I bet I know what that hot sauce tastes like. And then you taste the hot sauce. You're like, I had no, I am bleeding from no. my orifices. I don't, this is, I did not expect this. This is not a thing. I'm possessed by this. That's why they call it ghost or whatever. You know, just like, like you think, you know, but you have no idea. You this think, is the true story. You're, of going, you're going to do this truly blind. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think like, cause Galactus is the devourer of worlds, right? Like, does he just like, does he hocus pocus them? Does he grab a knife and fork out and just like, as a denizen of the planet, do you look up and just see this giant like butter knife coming down, and then like I, <laughs> I would some say that's why the Grand Canyon is there. <laughs> I like the idea that Silver Surfer's surfboard is his butter knife. <laughs> I mean, but I I, I guess the uh, the Silver Surfer is kind of the host of Galactus, right? Like he goes and he gets in the seat. And he's just like, this is where you'll be seated, my master. You know, um, <laughs> would you like any wine? <laughs> <laughs> but but dude, like. I, I see, like, I, I don't see any, like, specific Galactus stuff. But, of course, there's, like, that huge otherworldly celestial being, mm-hmm. you know, just, like, oh, it's wonderful. I freaking love it. Uh, So it it looks awesome, dude. I, helplessness, I, too. I feel like I was, I'm really trying to capture helplessness yes. in the previous two pages. Like, Deathless, like, comes charging in and, like, immediately this, yes. this, he has no... There is not even a chance in hell that he's even doing anything to this character. No, I, I, dude, I love that you, and you captured it so well. So, you know, for those of you watching, um, so our character Deathless is just kind of a bullheaded, you know, guardian, like warrior esque, you know, character. He's just someone who's just like, I must do this, and like charges through this door as if to like just, just demolish and you know destroy whatever's on the other side. 
And as soon as he reaches the other side, he's literally torn apart into puzzle pieces mm-hmm. by this character. You know, just like just torn asunder and forced to gain a new perspective on what his mission is and what he's how he's able to accomplish it. So it's it's going to be fun. I but dude, it looks so good. My my mission for the week was to I wanted to just start working on issue five because it was like, hey, we have a fifth issue. Or it's our final the final issue and i love that i love it so much that you're like you're writing so far ahead now too because like i was saying like if you think of something that you can wrap around and add right. to issue three you can do it now i mean i know you you're such a planner that you would have already you would have already had those things in issue three but i'm just saying like if you come up with a cool idea at the end of writing issue five you can add it in oh, dude, i know i know you're, you're totally right and i forget i love that stuff and i do have and like if you when you read the series and i you know you you see little things start to to come back and like there there are some references and stuff that i planned in issue one you know i was like (laughs) yeah this is gonna be a cool you know return for this and you know but but you're right i think it does give us like the a little bit of extra space you know for like fun foreshadowing stuff and i'm I'm excited for it but but steven steven i succeeded i you succeeded i out i didn't finish writing it because i i just but i just wanted to work on it so i i finished the outline i outlined issue five so i'm just like we both succeeded this week. We freaking nailed it, Steven. We nailed, we nailed all of our work. We both just like like succeeded. This not week. not even a fuck ass. This is a full on success. We freaking nailed it. Uh, and and to celebrate, Steven, to celebrate, let's talk about stuff. Let's just talk about stuff, Steven. We haven't uh, like I feel like I miss you. We haven't talked about like we haven't you mm-hmm, know like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm everyone out there we, we we don't get a chance to watch a lot of things and talk about the things we watch because uh you know we're busy doing parenting stuff work uh just the drama of you know, just life in general just the you know you, you end up just staring off into the middle distance hoping that the next moment isn't <laughs> gonna just tear you apart into puzzle pieces uh you know it's it's not always great. your whole existence yeah. you know i mean like i it's it's yeah it's been a rough life but steven but this week i know you and I both watched a few things. So like let's let's do let's do TV talk with Steven Anthony. Dun 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 Watching that show, watch it with my daughter. It was so good, so I grabbed Tina and then I watched it again with my wife. So Brad. I am the reverse and you is a show and I don't know, whatever. <laughs> scaling, <laughs> scaling part. Do, 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 All right. So Steven and I both watched X-Men 97. If you haven't caught up with X-Men 97, I'd say skip this section because we're gonna let's just we're gonna spoil stuff. We're gonna if you spoil. don't skip this segment, you'll remember it. Let's yeah. just put it that way. Yeah. So skip the segment. Uh, when, once you watch X-Men 97, come back and enjoy it with us because we're going to talk about it for a minute. Uh, but here we go. To, spoiler alert. X-Men 97. Steven. Off? Go ahead. No, it was good. Steven, Steven uh, like, my experience with X-Men was as a child. That was all of my knowledge of X-Men as a child. Like, mm-hmm. it just, it all came from the X-Men animated series. I was like, ah, I know everything there is to know. Who has to read a comic? Because our age, we weren't really getting comics in droves oh. like that. And the X-Men were booming in the 90s. There would yes. have been so many storylines our parents would have had to buy us. I would have loved for my parents to buy me those comics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my, com- my parents were, were just not those people. Like, I never got to go to comic shops when I was a kid, you know? So it was like, I would just, just like you, like, just freaking galactus consume the worlds that were given to me on saturday mornings you know i was like oh, i would feed a feast on them you know um so when i when i heard that x-men 97 was coming out i was like i can't freaking wait for this i'm gonna watch it immediately and then you know what happened steven you know what happened it came out and i was like oh my god i have so much to do <laughs> and there's just so much going on like i just like it's so weird like we just it's just it sucks when like you want to watch something so desperately and i'm sure a lot of people who probably skipped this section because of the spoilers are going through that right now but it's true like it's just one of those things where it's like as much as 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 excited as you can be for something you have to put things off sometimes and it's so frustrating because of 
the internet and the amount of spoilers and the fact that like I know that people are just super excited to talk about things and I I, I I don't hate them for it but I'm also like I don't know I don't know when it's appropriate to talk about things or when it's appropriate to how you can spoil things on social media in a way that lets you express what your thoughts what, according like, to social media it's just immediate I mean, it, <laughs> the second it happens apparently it's okay I mean, I mean, like, I, it's it's sad, but like, I can't, I don't actually begrudge the people because I understand, like, hey, this is out and it's huge and it's important to me and I want to share it. But it's also like, it sucks because I, I had the most devastating part of this show so far spoiled for me on social media. And it was like, <sighs> It hurt, Stephen. It hurt because I saw it. And of course, when I saw it on, on social media without context or anything, I was like, why would they do this? Why would they freaking do this? They just like they're ruining it. Why would they ruin it? Why they like he's the best? They're not even commenting on it. They just they yeah. just tweeted a video with no no words. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. So just doing so, their daily part to ruin this for other people. <laughs> so so what's your experience been like with X-Men 97? Obviously, you like so I, your entire family, you're betraying yes. X-Men cult. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. off rip cyclops is a thousand times better in this series than he was oh. in the previous series off rip dude his dude. optic blast landing from the freaking uh X -jet, Quinjet? no extra extra i don't know what's 100 what, you know what i really that? like you know what i really like that they've done with cyclops i mean aside from just simply like like kind of humanizing him a little bit more and making him a little bit more uh not, not just relatable but just like less uh boy scouty you know but mm -hmm. like i i really like the way they're using his powers where they're using yeah. the they're using like the kind of um the force, the force like, energy rather than just like a laser beam they're using it so he can move his they're using it the right way yes. finally, basically and it's Dude, when he was fighting those when he was fighting the bad guys in the first episode he's pushing off the wall yes. and like, oh dude it was so it, epic it's so neat to see and i like i really appreciated that um i also i kind of appreciated that they kept a lot of the weird melodramatic writing like storm yeah. is the same like gene is the same like i kind of i like Ma those things. i love how magneto just like never says a, a normal word ever about anything yeah, like of course what, what did he say to gambit when they were in the jet he's like Need I remind you that you are the only one who would have trouble oh, with gravity or something like that yeah. if this happened? I'm like, oh, Magneto. <laughs> but yeah, so Cyclops was a huge plus. I actually like the way, granted, it's not spoilers. It's not the Jean Grey we know at first. It's Madeline Pryor. It's her clone from Sinister, which they dropped so much crazy stuff in that in the five episodes I've seen, oh, yeah. you know? Um but I like I like this the, the Jean Grey dynamic and Madeline Madeline Pryor and like, dude. To, to further on that that story beat like when that thing happened with with cyclops emotionally yeah. um astral plane cheating on gene like like bro like is he cheat i mean like what is that at that point i mean who's the who who has he been with who now for 10 person years? Yeah. yeah yeah who's the person no, i mean I, the woman he made a child with or like at what point was this woman added to my I, life at, yeah you know? dude, that that whole thing is that's so complicated and it's yeah, it's it's complicated as heck, and I feel for for Scott. You know, when, when I feel for all three of them actually. I feel for, for Scott. Them, I feel really? for Gene. I feel for Madeline. Yeah, I I do too. When it first happened, my my first thought was, oh, they're doing this just so they can have their cake and eat it too, so Logan can get a Gene and Scott can get a Gene. Like that's why they're doing. It. Like that was my first thought was like that's what they're doing, and then they're like, oh, this is who she is. She's gonna be this like evil character, but not evil character, and not here. Like she has. Uh, this like very complicated the goblin queen yeah, yeah yeah so i was like oh this is this is cool it's very interesting and like it steven it resulted in some of the coolest animation that i kind of feel almost didn't dude get, but made it better like i couldn't for, for dude because the show is animated well yes but yes. yes there were notable scenes like for when magneto and, and madeline Pryor are fighting in the, yes. the window panes yes. like i was like am i watching like a cinematic like animation right now like 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 the graphics in that and the the angles and the perspectives yes. and it, it and felt all, so crazy all of the like fun like uh like john carpenter-esque like like uh, just the crazy absurd surreal things that she was creating with her mind it was like it looked incredible. It looked like an anime in the best yeah. way possible. And I Tina Tina even said, because Tina's a Chainsaw Man fan. Yeah. And she's like, this is like an episode of Chainsaw Man. And I'm like, really? Oh, cool. Because I haven't actually watched Chainsaw Man yet, but yeah. Tina loves that. So dude. But like animation-wise, it's 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 fantastic because I feel like it works as a whole, 
but it has these like elevated elements every once in a while or it's just like occasionally super cinema you know like cinematic okay. and it just drop the production budget right here in this scene and in this scene like we really need yeah. it on these fight scenes because <laughs> you know it's they did really well in some of those scenes and it's and and there i mean there's a lot to say about the show but it, and like it's kind of funny because there, there some of it i'm like who i wonder how much of this is like the improvements of like the new writing of the show and like what they're doing with the characters versus who i am as a person an adult like rather than you know when i was a child i was just like i want to see gambit and i want to see you know like nightcrawler and i want to see like i want to see wolverine chop stuff up you know um but like dude jubilee is so much cooler now like i I, she really is okay so what i I, it's funny i realize like what i like about jubilee is she embodies that thing that i always love about superhero movies where like she's learning her powers still you know Mm -hmm. so like we're watching her and they all are to some extent but they're her to like a greater extent where like we're seeing her go from, oh, I can make fireworks to like, oh, I can actually become a useful and like valued member of the X-Men beyond just the the familial part, which, you know, is important, of course. But mm-hmm. like, you know, like as a kid, I'd be like, ah, oh, you know, Jubilee makes fireworks. But like now I'm like, oh, look at Jubilee. She's actually like this human character or like, no, she's a mutant, but like she has like these, you know, human qualities and she just has to navigate this weird life. Uh, while- I was actually even going to, like yeah, while she's like yeah being a mutant but then still being a teenager who's exactly. coming of age yeah. i was gonna say the only episode that and i, I hate even calling it this because it was so good but the only episode that quote unquote felt filler was jubilee's episode mm-hmm. but it was such a good like message for like coming to age like yep. yes life is scary but you know, and playing video games like living the same moments over and over again is it feels safe and secure but that's not life and like it was like such a oh and it was it was so cool like the video game episode in itself was so cool dude i love that episode and you know what i I liked about it is like i like i I, like you said it is a filler episode or it felt if i I get that in comparison to the plot you wanted to know about you want you know like but I kind of like that because although there's always been like a heavy element of like serialization and like, yeah, they are telling a story. There are a lot of just like, hey, like there's just a one shot episode. It's like all of my favorite shows are like that. Buffy was like that. The X-Files is like that. You know, like all of these shows that have like this long extended serialization have like it, it, like intentional moment. Of, intermissions, like, basically. Like intermissions with characters where it's like, hey, yes, we might not be pushing this narrative of like you know, the wide story like the ensemble story but we are pushing the narrative of this character in a way that's going to allow you to appreciate how she's going to fit into the wider narrative mm-hmm. and I'm just like i love that i want to see i want to see more of that with with every character really i want you know mm-hmm. i like i would i love that because it, it really did make me appreciate her character more and the new characters and like you know just yeah i think i think that's gonna be sunspot right i think it's his name oh is oh, it? he's got like solar power roberto Got like solar powers, oh, dude. But I just, I like so far, I'm really loving it. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited to see what they're doing with uh Storm, even. Like, I really like how they took her powers and how, like, I, I love how much it affected her and how you can see her relationship with Forge and how that's that's kind of growing confusing, thing and confusing, <laughs> confusing yeah. at, at the same time because of what he did. But, yeah. dude, when I saw Forge, I was just like, bro. There needs to be a comic series where every superhero but mutants is somehow like destroyed and Forge becomes the new Iron Man because of all people to be an Iron Man, it would be Forge. Like the dude can invent anything. Like that's his mutant power. Is there anything you can think of he can invent basically? Oh. Like that's that's like Tony Stark with mutant gifts. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? Like that's it, like... it really is. I it's it's incredible. And I don't like I... I don't know the limits to that power, you know, like it's, yeah. can he literally invent any, but I, okay. What I do like is, I guess I know some of the limitations of that power, which are, he needs to have access to the materials and the things that yeah. he actually needs in order to build a thing. Like, you know, yeah, you can know how to build a time machine, but if you are stuck in a desert, you can't build a time machine, you mm-hmm. know, I just can't, you, you can't can... build a suit of armor to blow up like a huge, your way uh, out. I do of wonder, I, I do wonder though, could forge, could forge, with his power, knowing what it is, could he Minecraft himself into a time machine, right? Think about it. Could he start with sand and be like, I want to use the sand in order to cultivate this thing and that can make 
rocks or whatever it may be. And then I want to use this, these rocks in order to, you know, make a sedimentary rock. And then I want to make, you know, can, could he just so like, vampire forge, <laughs> immortal forge who has immortal. eons to be able yeah. to do anything he needs to. Yes, absolutely. <sighs> so it's, I, don't know. I just got to wait, you know, two, two million years for this carbon to become diamond. And then we'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> like one day, can you just imagine like forge gets sent back in time. He's just like, Oh no! And there, there are no people. It's like a single cell organism. He's like, "Well, got to start all of life now." Here we go. <laughs> Forge is the project. Yeah, like he just creates everything. Like Forge is the reason we exist. He's the reason. For Here, buddy, life. you looks like you'd have an easy. He's evolution. It looks like you'd have an easier time if you had some fins. <laughs> oh, you're not liking the water. Let's put some feet on those suckers. <laughs> like, but, but, dude, okay we're kind of towing around the thing that I know we're, everyone everyone's thinking about and that we you know we kind of talked about briefly um Steven I felt so bad for Gambit I felt so bad for Gambit like I I cried so much in that show first of all first of all there was a bit of foreshadow okay okay like an episode before right what what did he say okay Gambit wakes up and he goes out um and he wants to get rogue some coffee and rogue says magneto beat you to the pot and i was like Damn. and i was like i was like <laughs> oh, i don't think she's talking about a pot like i was like this is <laughs> wow i was like okay and i like i know that was foreshadowing for like what we what learned. was coming yeah and it was it was so funny because i was just like oh okay this is weird they're kind of cucking uh the you know gambit and i it's it's very strange and i understand okay so i and everyone watching this right now probably you know, has seen the show or just doesn't care but like so rogue and magneto have had a relationship at some point which is so strange with the age difference <laughs> like i mm -hmm. I, I had trouble with it personally, or I was just like, ah. Well, because like even me, I was doing I was doing math. So yeah. Like she's probably in her early thirties in X Men, right? Like the X Men right. show. But she was running around with Magneto when she didn't know how to use her powers and yeah. was afraid and scared. So I mean, at best, we're talking a few years before Charles. So she was probably in her early twenties, mid twenties, and Magneto was like six or seven during world war ii yeah <laughs> yeah so like Ooh. yeah do the math there he's old and she's 20 it's very strange it's very it's like worse than dicaprio it's like you know <laughs> it's like i mean we're talking like dane cook woody allen dicaprio meet together and become magneto <laughs> you know and it turns it's... out magnetism is fusing those actors together <laughs> so magneto is one of my favorite Oh, yeah. x-men characters of all time just no, so we're clear. I, I, mean, I just think it's i mean <laughs> i knew they, they they've done that storyline in comics they have followed the whole magneto and yes i do think the original x-men and this one i mean the whole love triangle situation is a very fun thing to play around with because it keeps certain characters intertwined and engaged between each right. other and everything but yeah poor gambit like dude i felt so bad for him and Okay, so we learn that Magneto can somehow uh, use his uh, electromagnetic electromag yeah. in order to create an electromagnetic condom over his Yield body. Or, yeah. and essentially touch Rogue and they can be physical and, you know, have a relationship that way. And through that, and because of that, uh, you know, Rogue's able to feel those things that she's never felt before. And, you know, so she has that, or she's had that relationship with Magneto. Magneto then asks Rogue, to be his queen of Genosha, right? Um, and, you know, she's a little reluctant, but then she's like, okay, well, this is going to bring on the greater good. And it'll like, help people in the end, or help mutants in the end. And this, of course, tears Gambit apart. It's hurting Gambit. You know, he sees them together and all this. And they're, you know, dude, it, it's, it sucked. It sucked watching Gambit go through that, especially since, okay, Steven, okay, so previously in Anthony's life, all of my... All of my X Men knowledge as a young kid came from the show, right? Where I was like, "Oh, you yeah, Gambit. Gambit loves you know Rogue. He's so cool." Look, you know. So, my first job ever was at Phil's Comics um, in Margate, Florida. I was just like, I, I, I bagged and boarded and arranged and did that stuff, and it, he'd pay me in cash, and then I would buy comics and I'd leave. The first, the early comics that I bought were almost all 
Gambit. <laughs> it was like Gambit and then Daredevil and then Deadpool. And then like, and, and then I started branching out, like as far as like buying my own stuff, you know, just started exploring the very first, like when, when I was buying it, I would like, I was like, I think 15, I was like 14, 15 at the time I was buying it. Gambit in the series had just discovered a way to use to, since he is a master of, you know, the energy, <laughs> he uses a way to manipulate the energy field around his body, similar to what Magneto does in the show and is able to touch rogue like temporarily. And they kiss and they, you know, have this relationship and everything. And of course, like, yeah, there are going to be pitfalls. It's not a permanent solution, but like you don't wear a condom all day. You know what I mean? So it's just like, like, it sucked to remember that, like, like you know, as I was watching, like their ex explanation. You took my boy's know, story power. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just like, well, I'm sure that's a like you can make that explanation. You know, like you can use that for Magneto, but like uh, Gambit also had a story in which he did something similar. So I was like, it sucks to watch him not get to explore that side of himself or find a way to close that gap with Rogue because like it is. I don't know. It's adorable. I love them. <laughs> like who wouldn't love them? Yeah. You know, and like, he's such a great character and I was, it sucked to, to watch, uh, to watch what happened to him. Cause I wanted to see more of him, you know, like I, I mm -hmm. love what they were doing with him in the show. And then of course, uh, to see him, to see him go out, Steven, I cried. I cried. Dude, they did a really good job in that scene of like, once again, like I want to like, tap into that like that helpless feeling like dude like when 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 the master mold from the future basically starts his attack on genosha like it feels to me i it felt like that the 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 beach scene in saving private ryan like yeah. if they really captured that full-on war vibe like mm -hmm. and the x-men and mutant kind are there is not even a prayer like what's yeah. happening to them is it's literally just mass destruction and like they're all going to die. Yeah. And then literally moments before that rogue broke, basically breaks it off with Gambit. Gambit yeah. says, I'm your friend and nothing more basically. Ugh. And then rogue goes and rogue tells Magneto basically the same thing. Like, yeah. I think he's right. Like, you know, there's more, more than just touch, right? There's more. Yeah. There's more yeah. Than it's, it's like, ugh. dude, she, she, yeah. So she tells um, Magneto that you know, it's, it's more than just, you know, skin deep or whatever, you know, and, deep, but yeah, like, yeah. dude, Gambit never knows that, <laughs> you know? No, like, that's what I was getting at, man. Like, not only doesn't know that, like, like throws the bike at Rogue to get her out of the fray. Willingly, knows that yeah. She's an emotional, yeah. She's in an emotional headspace. She's so, going to hurt herself. Gambit yeah. willingly sacrifices himself. As far as he knows, for someone who isn't going to be the love of his life although he loves it like has this unrequited you know situation with and he sacrifices himself for her I, uh, and saves everyone who, you know who i mean granted it was because of everything that was happening but let's yeah. be real rogue's rage in that moment was because oh. magneto and the morlocks was just murdered so not only that but like she's like in this frenzy because magneto was the, the man that she left you for in your mind because she actually left both of you which and then ends up dying to the oh. sentinel in the most heroic epic way i mean he basically oh, that, was, that was incredible dude that that whole i mean it was beautiful it was like wonderfully animated it was you know it was it was like the colors and everything and just like the the tone of it the performance like the voice performance and everything was just fantastic i freaking loved it and i cried and i i i, I you know it made me sad but it was wonderful. It was really cool. It was really, it was like an epic thing to see in a show in which I didn't expect any of the main characters to actually die. You know, I didn't, I like, I, I was like, you know, like I, I they kind of like, they killed off Morph before they killed off, you know, like, the, the, you know, like people, characters will, you know, come and go and come back through, you know, various time travel devices and such. Um, but I, I did not expect Gambit to die. Like not, not until I, I saw it on I, Twitter. <laughs> yeah, not yeah, not until it happened. I do think us seeing Cable is gonna is signifying something greater at play here. I don't know how much they'll undo. There yeah. is still like five episodes left in the season, I think, or four yeah. at least. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, yeah. do you want to as far as our talking about it, do you want to just wait until it's all out? Or I think now that we're here, I think we should episode? bring this up maybe. I think we'll see how we'll see how people, like, if people enjoy. We'll see what the comments on YouTube if they're enjoying our our 
That's true. Talk so let us it. let us know if you want us to do like an episode by episode commentary when it comes out, uh, or if you want us to wait until it's like wraps up the next five, and then we'll we'll do like another like ah, binge, like you know, just like I bit purge. I don't like we'll we'll talk about it. The but last it's... piece I want to add to the mm-hmm. X Men ninety seven is that usually on team shows, usually on shows that involve an entire squadron of players and in, in in the field, there's usually the character you don't care to watch. And I'll have to say, I feel like all of them are so well done that like, like Morph is hilarious. Like Morph oh. had so many hilarious moments, like, and yeah. so many like deep and dark. I mean, like he Sinister has fucked him up and oh. done things to him, you know? Yeah. And like, but like Morph is awesome. Even Storm, this Storm is written really well. And like, I don't know. I like, I literally like everyone's story so far. I haven't, yeah. there's not been, and like you were saying, Jubilee was the character that I wasn't necessarily interested in in the previous series when I was yeah. a kid. But she's yeah. so interesting this time around, you know, like it's it really they're they're doing a really fantastic job. And I, I'm excited for it. I'm so glad that they didn't drop the ball with it, you know, or try to do like it does feel like its own thing. It doesn't feel exactly like the old, own, you know, mm-hmm. the old show. It feels like it has it like feels this, like X-Men Evolution a little bit, too. It to does. Me, like it, I, it's fun. I, it, it has. I a, love that show, too. Oh, me, too. But it feels like it has like mm-hmm. a unique energy to it uh, while maintaining all well, kind of being like, hey, guys, don't worry. It's still this familiar thing. And it's fun. And it's, you know, I I think it works. And I'm glad people are actually enjoying it. And I'm glad that it, we're enjoying it. And it's it's working. And it's it's good. And it's fun to watch. So if, if you're enjoying it or if you're not, let us know in the comments. Don't spoil anything in the comments. Don't be a jerk. People might scroll down and be like, mm, you know. But yeah, I just don't spoil stuff. That's why we did spoilers. You so, can spoil, but definitely put spoiler alert X-Men 97 as the first words first of your words. Thing. Yeah, just in case. We don't want anyone to see. Yeah. Um. But yeah, let us know what you think below. Let us know uh, if you want us to talk about any other shows or anything like that. Um, but otherwise, Stephen, this week, the last thing I want to do before we before we uh, get out of here, we do have a, a few quick questions from the colony, Stephen. Ooh, dun 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 questions from the colony. Questions from the colony. Questions from the colony. Questions from the colony. Featuring Stevie and Anthony. Questions from the colony. Questions from the colony. All right, go. <laughs> so every once in a while, Stephen and I get together and we do our best to just, we, we, we answer the questions of the people. You know, we're, 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 we're here for the people. We're people, people. And we're trying to make a colony here. We're trying to build a community of like-minded. We want an echo chamber of people who love us. No, I'm just, we want we want to help support other people who are doing similar things. That is what we're doing. So we want to we want to hear from you. We want to talk to you. We want to you know, answer your random questions about you know what, what, whatever you want to ask us about. So we have a few of those. We have a few questions from the people. So here they go. Okay, hard hitting question, Stephen. J M Goldmeyer asks. If you were a dog, what color collar would you have? Ooh, red, red and black. Yeah. Deadpool, baby. Sounds pretty good. Dog pool. Okay, well, I had him pulled up and Real then character. disappeared. His. Yeah. It's just a genuine character. Well, what's what's hilarious is like at this point, you could say anything pool and it's just like, yeah, that's a thing. But like, I, you can kind of do that with anything now that they've opened the multiverse to everything. You know, it's like everything it's just crazy to me that that deadpool is such a household name now like it is the pikachu of marvel at this point it is it's so crazy to me like such a side character boba fett syndrome really is what it is it's it's true um but i mean he kind of deserves it he's so he does and ryan reynolds i mean it's interesting though that mm -hmm. most people who love deadpool and love love the deadpool that we've been given with ryan reynolds like he's freaking fantastic he embodies deadpool like wonderfully however the things that you and I grew up loving about Deadpool don't exist in the modern Deadpool, like the multiple voices. Like there, you know, there's some of the like uh, this, you know, the the screen uh, fourth, you know, fourth wall breaks and such, and like the self awareness, like the the meta humor. But like, I always love the the freaking yellow and the the white. The and, yellow, like, yeah, I, I love that too. You know, even just, even when that was coming out, I remember I would, there was a website I would go to frequently, not to cite, you know, get, get off course. There's a website that I used to go to called the Deadpool Bugle, and they would just tell you what every issue that he was going to appear in that week. And there was always people talking such crap about Daniel Way's run on Deadpool, where the voices were basically introduced. And I always thought that that was such a cool like writing style. Like you, it gives it, it gives you constant commentary on what's happening in the in the issue. It's awesome, dude. I I always love that, and I I, I love 
it it gives you in one character gives you the opportunity to like undercut your own jokes or like punch mm -hmm. up jokes as well you know like I, and that's that always works for me you don't need the straight man character you don't need the thing to play off of if that is in your head and you know that you know it's mm -hmm. it's like it's like when we you know like i'll tweet like my brain says this and i say this i'm going back and forth it's both me but i'm having these like you know these multiple you know just like a, these conversations a, 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 a thoughts you know <laughs> Um, okay, let's see. Jackson Howell asked. Jackson. Jackson. Um, what's his uh, channel? Doc Comics. I believe yeah. so. All right, and so, it's really cool. I love his channel. Yeah, go everyone. Go go subscribe and watch Doc Comics. Um, he is doing freaking awesome. All of his videos are fantastic. So if you're interested in like Marvel, DC, and like you know other great pacing, like he gets right to the point, but you still learn so much from the video. It's really solid. People are like, learn, how dare you? How dare you? No, it's really cool. It's it's super, it's like, I like I, I love that. I love like the cool, like, here, learn everything you need to know about Green Lantern in one minute. I'm like, yes, okay. Just give it to me. Give it to me, feed it. It's the matrix. Feed me, daddy. <laughs> so if you want to be fed by daddy, go check out Doc Comics. Um, but Jackson asks, if you are on a deserted island and only have one comic book event slash series to read other than Deathless, of course, which would you pick? Oof. Honestly, and this is a this is out of left field, but I guess rereading it, I don't know. But I felt uh, this. You don't even know what I'm gonna say. I mean, you'll know what I'm talking about. But Archie, I feel, Wait, what? <laughs> I feel like why the last man was a really cool comic series, and like like all the places he ends up and like experiences like and everything in that series is like I have maybe it's because I haven't read it in like ten years, but like. Yeah. I think that that'd be a really cool series to have mm -hmm. to read because I mean, if I'm deserted on an island, I'm kind of trapped in a fallen world and it's in my own right. You know Ooh, what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and like, maybe I would relate to some of that, what he's feeling and like understanding in those moments. Like he's, 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 because why is the last man on earth? So he is alone. He is deserted on his own island. You know, yeah. I don't know. I no, feel like that'd be a good one. That's a good answer. Um, I would bring the madman, like, omnibus um, like yeah all the blue, like collection. giant yeah I, I i would bring like the whole collection of madman because it was it's similar to what you're saying about uh why the last man but it's it's a little more hopeful and goofy where i'm like i might need the hat because i don't know there are too many palm trees around i can fashion a very 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 simple news <laughs> like i um <laughs> No, but I would I would love to like I I, I want to reread Madman anyway because it's freaking incredible. Uh, let's see. Fowler asked. So Fowler Jones asked. Fowler, Fowler. we love. Um, we've got we've got a comic series. We've got a movie in pre production. What is the next media coming from y'all? A book, a TV show, a video game. Stephen, what's next for the Ostrich Colony? Forget what it is. It is it Yowie? What is it? So Anthony and I are going to star in a male on male. Right, right. I'm with you already. Like, <laughs> I, you stop there. I'm in. And tie. <laughs> What's the word? I forget what it is. It's a style of comic where they they put two men together that nor like not even necessarily um, gay men, but they like they like ship two random men i, I do that. like i do like that when you think of us you, you the way you categorize is not necessarily gay not necessarily <laughs> like you're like you're like listen if they're gonna put us in a book you know what it's gonna be <laughs> no As a I know, that's our selling point so, like, so there's no my, confidence there's no confidence so they're not necessarily gay. surprising to absolutely no one they're not necessarily <laughs> gay. But, like, could they be sure sure <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do steven and i are gonna be in that thing that steven's talking about tentacle fingers <laughs> nipple fingers do you remember nipple fingers nipple. oh nipple fingers Psst. wait that was piss yeah. fingers too oh, we have so we many have a lot of finger we have a lot of finger finger based jokes a lot of finger <laughs> jokes um i mean there's the cheese dust there's the other <laughs> Steven and I are very finger based. We uh, have we have finger kinks. I think is what it is. <laughs> we may have tapped into something. My dad like gave me the wrong Newton gene. <laughs> My it's the, wrong, got it's the wrong hemisphere, Steven. <laughs> Steven, focus it's lower. Literally, it's literally the Will Smith Carlton meme. He confused, but he got the spirit. <laughs> 
Okay, so Fowler, uh, to answer Sorry, your Fowler. question sincerely, I, I don't, we don't, we honestly don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. We, <clears throat> I can tell you that we both want to make, um, <sighs> we like to tell stories. We like to tell stories. We, we, we will make anywhere we can tell anything, a story. Yeah, anything we can. I animation has always been something we wanted to yes, do too. Yes, I, I, dude, if we can make uh, like an animated series. I would I would freaking love that. That would be incredible. It would be so cool. Uh I I've thought about setting up um animated bits for us, you know, like animated characters to do like little clips from our show and stuff, but I wish I had that time, you know, like that's 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 mm. but anyway, yeah, animation would be really cool. Uh probably it would be a series though, probably, right? Yeah. That's All right, let's see. So Lost Between Worlds, our good friend Edwin asked. Oh, Nightmare on Elm Street review when? So I can guest host and have a discussion on it. Okay, so uh, I haven't really talked about this much. I haven't talked about this at all on the show because I just started it. But I started a, a new channel called My Favorite Movie Ever. You can find it on youtube.com slash my at my favorite movie ever and it's just a place where i'm going to be talking about bad movies and horror movies uh you just just giving little i'm gonna look i'll be completely full disclosure i'm doing this specifically because we're going to be making a horror comedy movie and i know that here all as as wide as our audience may be as you know as varied as it may be it's primarily people in the writing community and comic book communities and i would like to find ways to kind of throw a net out into the world for like the horror community and like people who are interested in, in different movies. And it's hard to get them in the, like, to, to pay attention to our, our somewhat silly variety show that we have here, you know? Um, so I'm, what I'm trying to do is just kind of do the thing where I extend a net outward in one direction and go, Hey, everyone come back this way, you know? So I'm, so I've made a, I made a channel for movies so far. I've only done one video. I'm going to do another one this week. Um, but yeah, Edwin, uh, I don't know if I'm going to talk about Nightmare on Elm Street because I'm mostly talking about, although I know it's called my favorite movie ever, I'm mostly talking about movies that aren't actually anyone's favorite movie ever. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's kind of what makes it fun for me. Uh, but a uh, serious question for Anthony, do you have uh, an idea of what your next comic series will be. Steven and I have talked about it a bunch. Like we've talked about bringing scavengers back and absentees back. Also, Steven, hang on. I'm, I'm actually, I'm glad he asked this. Okay. Also, Steven, I, I freaking, I was okay. Today I was looking for my old uh, notes for, we have issues. And I was like, I want to see like what I used to write. And like, has it, how, like, I know it's always been similar, but I want to see, and do, it's pretty much always been the same, which is kind of cool. It makes me feel good. Cause I was like, am I doing something different? You know, I was like, am I sucking, mm -hmm. you know, but like, it's basically the same. The only difference is really is when I used to do the, like um, what we did to our issues, you know, like that was like the only thing where I was like, okay, Bought maybe it. I tried to bring that back. We need to bring that back. In yeah, that's why I'm going to, I, I think what stopped it is, um, I don't know. Like, I, I, I just like, I started, I stopped doing the numbers and then I was like, I kind of like that kind of fell off. Cause I was like, are people bored of this? But I think it's fun. I think we should bring it back. But I was looking for those notes and Steven in my notebook, I found this first draft from March 31st, 2013 of the absentees. What? Yeah. That's wild. Isn't that cool? It's our first, it's it's just draft one of the freaking of the absentees. Isn't that cool? Like, I love that. And then, like, I have the uh the second attempt here, where it's like the second attempt of the script here. It's, it's just so cool. I was like, what is I just had them together. I don't even know why. They're just in there. But anyway, um, but but as far as what we're gonna work on next, it's 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 kind of up in the air right now. We haven't we talked about it a little bit. I, I would like to do an anthology. I think that would be the coolest thing for us to do because it's short. Like we, we have short stories. We can always throw those short stories in other people's anthologies in like, you know, kind of craft things as communities. I think that would be cool. Like maybe we can get together with like Lee, um, you know, or anyone who mm -hmm. like any of our friends who have like short anthology stories and just like put books together and be like, hey, let's do this thing that can support like, a, a you know, more people in the community at once, throw it together. And, you know, like that's just a thing you can do to lead toward, uh, you know, lead people back to various creators and hopefully find the wider uh, body of work from us, you know? Uh, but I think an anthology would be really cool. Edwin also asked, for Steven, are you still working on that story you sent me once before about the different tribes? I, I, I did. Um, I have. I haven't worked on it in a while, and mostly because I really don't even know like how I ever wanted to end that. Like, I I feel like I wanted to like write out these really cool sequences and like ideas that I had, but I kind of just. 
I have like so many ideas on where I can go, but I don't know where the story ends. So like I kind of just got stuck on it, and then Deathless has just taken yeah full 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 reign, you know. So every now and then I'll I'll go back and read it and be like, oh, this was pretty cool. Like I do like the era or the the mm-hmm. war the the clan of war and like the different ideas that were in that book were cool. Oh yeah, yeah, there um, were cool ideas. I think if I ever do anything with that book, like if it was ever going to be a drawn series it would definitely be like we're we've made it you know i don't think that's like something i could ever do right. now but i also think like a, a like a novella or what what do they call them light novels yeah. like uh that would be cool where the where the where novel where some brought, pictures and just yeah yeah like certain action sequences are like shown and visualized and then the rest is just like a novel maybe something like that i think that'd be really cool and that'd be easy for me to put together but yeah, no, I got stuck on how to end it, whether to really lean into the whole they each have separate gods or if it's right. like really like what lesson am I trying to teach here? I lost the That's what fair. message I was going for. So I yeah, just kinda... dude, oh, that, it's important. I mean, you're you're smart to think about it. You know, yeah. you don't what's get... the message yeah. here? I mean, it's cool. But what's the message? What am I trying? Yeah, to what are you trying here? to show and say? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. OK. Daily asked. Hi, Daly. Uh, Daly asked, have you figured out what's really an area 50, <laughs> areas 50 and 53 yet? Because obviously we have area 51 is, uh, as we all know, the aliens, right? And then area B52, <laughs> they have a rock lobster and it's a, there's, it's a love shack. Um, and area- actually in, in World of Warcraft, uh, there's a parody of area 51 in Netherstorm called area 52. So that's really that's oh, what that's I was thinking. Funny. That's why I was thinking. I was like, how does, how does Anthony know about area 52 in Netherstorm? That's what I was thinking. So, uh, so area 50, uh, I think area 50 is where they train the people to be prepared to see aliens. Like that's where they train all of the various uh, like government officials and the, you know, people, they put them in there. They have like a whole, it's almost like a haunted house training simulator situation. It's mm-hmm. like, a, it's what you see in men in black essentially. And area 53 is where they put all the aliens that they don't want to ever, uh, interact with humans ever but they have to trap them because they can't kill them due to like intergalactic uh war fears and such so it's like space prisoners that's that's so like I... what was that what's that what's that series online created by communities of people the scp or something like that oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's like area 53 it's like the monsters yeah. that are like you know coming in they're just very dangerous or they sure. could cause they could absolutely Horrible destroy problems. life as we know it. Like whether or not they destroy the planet is up for you know discussion. But like, yeah, we can't kill them. We can't do anything with them. We just lock them up and sh- hope for the best. Cold spot you have paranormal. To ask, you can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> cold, cold spot paranormal research asked, uh, "What is your favorite non-podcasting thing to do, Stephen?" Ooh, non pod I have a lot of things I like to do. Yeah. Lately, I've been playing a lot more guitar because like, yeah. I, I did get my Marshall. I fix. was going to say the same thing. That's why I just told you before we were recording that I was like, I was playing with like the uh, sound for musicians on Zoom because I was like, I want to play more music. Dude, I miss playing music so much. Like, I mean, I play music by myself, but like, I want to play music with you, Steven. I yeah, we, do, we, we need to get together. Like, I think it. I think it'd be cool to learn, like I said, Coheed songs to because there's obviously two guitar parts, and like yeah. being able to like full on acoustic performance and Coheed would be so cool. Yeah, I wish we had like a like a drummer friend that is just like can completely sync up with our schedules. The one that's... time every three months we can do it, you know, yeah. that's what we need. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough. It's always, I mean, I guess every every band has that trouble, you know. But oh, dude, it just you know what we need to do. I need to just get like a cajon. I need to get one of those cajon things <laughs> Just and then be like, like Josh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so like, why not? Like you, like I can play guitar sometimes. And then sometimes if it's one guitar, I'll just play drums. You know, like it's just, we need to do something. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I I'm, I'm with you, dude. Like music. I mean, you know, of course there's family stuff and, you know, watching movies of, you know, mm-hmm. but like, yeah, music is always up there. It's always the thing that I do to like decompress, you know, yeah, for sure. It's, like always easy, it's easy way to channel your thoughts into nothing if yeah. that makes any sense in the most <clears throat> constructive nothing dude i'll t- like music's so weird yeah like i the other night i started like i started writing a song like just kind of coming up with it was so weird it's so weird i was kind of like coming up with a uh chord progression and stuff and just like playing in a certain way and then i started just kind of like you know when you you're like coming up with a melody you just kind of like speak in tongues a little bit like sometimes mm-hmm. i sing words I, 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 yes. I was like partially la bamba there <laughs> <laughs> it's a little la bamba it's a little bamba uh, 
<laughs> Ricky! Richie. Sorry, go ahead. Dude, so like I was kind of speaking in tongues and I started getting like super emotional. I was like, oh, I guess I'm on to something, but like I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Why am I getting emotional? Your heart's like, this is how I sound. <laughs> <laughs> What does it feel like when you break up with someone? <laughs> That's exactly how it felt, though. I was just like, I guess I'm I'm just speaking. This is the sound of my soul. I don't know what's going on. Um, okay, let's see. I was like, Wadu. <laughs> <laughs> so producer Sean. Sean, we love you so love much. Love you, producer Sean. Sean asked, from another mother. Kevin Feige comes to you and hands you the list of Marvel IP that they have they have access to. He says, I need you to build me a new Avengers team out of any five of these characters. It's in your hands to save the MCU. What do you do? Oh. So we have to be real. Like, this is not just the hypothetical, oh, you get to have your own movie, Stephen and Anthony. Like, we need to figure out five characters that are strong enough to carry a franchise as well as Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man carried a franchise. Okay, okay. So I think what's important here is not only casting the character, mm-hmm. but the actor that would play them that would make that that role Ooh. so iconic. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Dude, it's so hard. So you got to pull from so many people. Like, what's what's the storyline? Like, okay. I, th- I mean, I'll tell you my 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 sincere first reaction to this question is is this my the first thing i would do is i wouldn't think of it in terms of the avengers at all i would go back to basics because i think what we're missing is that like kind of more personal grounded myopic story of just like in a life of a character and that's what i miss i miss like i miss when when iron man was fighting a worse iron man and when you know like captain america's Mm -hmm. fighting a worse captain america you know like that's what like that's what it's like captain america's fighting an evil version of himself you know iron man's fighting an evil version we're seeing what they're capable of while they're learning what they're capable of while discovering who they can be as humans and you know and it's like that's what makes them interesting to watch you know we learn who they are as characters then as those characters start coming together it you know creates this larger team i think like one of the big problems that they're having in marvel right now is they're trying to make every movie a mini avengers movie every single time you know like every movie feels like they're fighting like a thanos you know or it's like oh okay i get it you know but it's like it gets a little exhausting everything it has like a, a scope and like a just the scale is too big and I, I i think like as much or as powerful as these characters can be you kind of have to downsize a little bit just and just to get to uh just to personalize the character a little bit for the audience and make people care again and that's how you come up with the iconic you know tony stark relationship that we all have with that character you know and like uh, yeah robert downey jr was a, a, a huge part of that he's a fantastic tony stark casting that was like incredible but we got to see him as Tony, you know, and see him building Iron Man and becoming this character, we don't get to see that very often with other things. A lot of other things are told through flashbacks or told in like little bits, or they're just, we get cameos and like the Hulk has a child now. And like, you know, like, oh, Beast is also there at the end credits. And it's like, okay, what? You know, like, yeah, it's it's just a lot. It's a lot. So like what I would do is I would freaking stop that and like yeah it's fun to get cameos and stuff but like i'd let people have their own movie you know i would do that again we would slow it down it's okay you know like the avengers aren't going anywhere you know it's like you know there are going to be uh huge events and like terrible uh dangers that will come to earth and we'll face those when we need to and that's what brings us together as a team but no i think uh we need to start small and have (sighs) It's it's difficult to build the team because we know I mean we we know who we have access to right we have access to just mm-hmm. who's been in the MCU and mutants you know so it's like do we break up the X Men do we say do we go like X Force new new I mean like I like, was gonna say I two plot lines that like that I think would adapt well to screen uh huh uncanny X Force yeah. would adapt well with character popularity um 
and like storyline wise, like the nat- yeah. like the whole theme of Uncanny X Force being nature versus nurture and the monsters we either overcome or are yeah. consumed by, yes. you know, like Dude. I feel like that's like such a good narrative. And yeah, not to mention, we get to explore new characters that haven't been on screen yet, but I'm sure they have access to due to you know like the the rights being there. Dude, like Phantom X, like Phantom X, Archangel hasn't really Archangel. had any good, good screen time. Dude, Psylocke, Psylocke had some screen time, but yes. not you know. Dude, but all of those characters. So I I think we both thought the same thing because we both loved that series so much. And like mm-hmm. it would work so well. And it would it would it's <sighs> the fact that in the first act they murder a child because it, that child could become apocalypse yeah. is a crazy powerful first act of a movie. Yeah. So like I- Oh yeah, it's incredible. And it's something that we all identify with as far as like asking one another hypothetical questions like, oh, if you can go back in time, would you murder Hitler as a kid? Like and all this stuff that we just talk about as humans, you know? And it's just like, they explore that in the, in the story while, um, while having like navigating these interesting relationships with super interesting characters and like such a cool dynamic, like with the, 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 just the wide, a variety of of uh personalities that you have there you know Absolutely. with like like deadpool and wolverine and phantom x and like it's dude it's just too good it's too good it's and crazy not- like it was crazy having phantom x and deadpool on the same squad because they're both <laughs> funny just in different ways like phantom yeah. x is obviously very cocky more intelligent better than you funny like yes. and then deadpool is just your complete i'm feeding archangel my arm because he was completely <laughs> oh. destroyed by famine dude, so was- so funny that was so funny but yeah that story if like doing doing that where like you start off uh with phantom x because it's mm-hmm. like you know it's like super kind of a grounded like he you you learn that character for the first time it would introduce it's it kind of like um guardians of the galaxy-esque introducing the audience to a new character they've never heard of and then kind of like dipping your toe in the water of like okay well here's a an x-men that you may or may not be familiar with and we have this angel situation you know to deal Mm -hmm. with we do a movie with archangel and we do a movie with silo we do a movie you know and like you do those movies and then have them come together when we learn about the coming of apocalypse like you know that that's just it would work and it would be fantastic and i kind of feel like apocalypse is one of those villains that like yeah he he feels apocalypse deserves a thanos style he he deserved he he always has deserved a huge epic series of shows or movies to explain his power his capabilities what i mean there's so much tied to apocalypse as a yeah. character it's cable it's 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 mr sinister is tied yes. to apocalypse i mean everything is tied to apocalypse exactly you know? and, and because of that you can literally do a movie in which mr sinister is the villain but you learn similar to what they did when they were building you know uh like ronin you know the destroyer you know where it's like they're building toward like everyone's working for apocalypse similar to how everyone was working for thanos that's just how these things work that's how you know you get a big bad and like and then archangel's movie could even be like him him and psylocke struggling to overcome when he became the horseman of death last time you know like like the movie can already live in the premise that apocalypse came and went in his life you know what i'm saying and like that's what leads up to what the things that transpire in uncanny x force the movie when they decide to overtake Apocalypse now because of all the damage he could cause and what I he mean, did cause. They can even, I mean, it, 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 the funniest thing is now that they have access to all of like the the multiverse and they can do anything they want at any point. When, you know, like they could easily say that Archangel is from a different timeline in which he's he's from a, the Age of Apocalypse timeline. He's from the Age of Apocalypse timeline, exactly. So like, yeah, that already happened for him, but now he's going to help us stop it from happening. And that's why he wants to join Phantom X, and that's why he wants to do all this because he has an opportunity to help people in a way that he couldn't before. You know, in a way that he hurt people, you know, people before. So I, I, I that's what I think. Like, you know, New see- Avengers would work too because just because I think oh, of like yeah. popular characters, but like New Avengers would work too. I mean, it's Spider Man, Wolverine. Yes. Oh uh, god, New Avengers was so much fun too. Luke Cage. There were so many cool characters on that. <laughs> oh, that would that would be cool. And they, I mean, they have access to that, and that's kind of that's probably what they're going to go with. Honestly, like I mean, that's uh, I don't know what they. Do you think Henry Cavill is going to be Wolverine? Um, I, I mean, I read that he's going to be in it. I was thinking he's, he's going, going to be a variant, but do you, do you think he's going to be? I was MCU thinking use Wolverine. I was thinking he was going to be Cyclops. Yeah, I think he'd make a better Cyclops, I think or even gonna... a Sentry. 
I think uh, he'd make an awesome century. I mean, obviously, yeah. oh. with Superman. So. Oh, yeah, I, I that would be amazing. I think it would be too similar to Superman, and people would just, mm-hmm. ah, and it would it just wouldn't be worth it. I could see him as Cyclops or like the MCU's Wolverine, but we're getting. I don't know. I don't know. Like we have to see Deadpool versus Wolverine to understand like what they're doing, what what they're even planning. Yeah. So, but yeah. So I, our I, team would be our, our Avengers. Kevin Feige, like saving grace, saving moment is Uncanny X Force plotline. Yeah. Hell, dude, you could up. you could even just take that plotline and apply it to anything. But oh, Steve, I feel like those characters are a winner winner chicken dinners. Yeah, hundred percent. I want to read those books now. I want to go. Oh my god. Okay. So uh, we only have a few more. Let's get let's get through them because it's getting super late. Uh, mm-hmm. Char- Charlie Hazas asks. Why do I keep missing these? FOMO. Charlie, we love you. I, I, you, I mean, that you, I, I was, I read that, I read that question. So you could have. So you're, you're here, buddy. You're here. You don't have FOMO. You didn't miss out. No fear. Per- miss, like, you don't have, no fear, Shakespeare. You're here with us. Uh, stay clear. Let's do this. Okay. Heather, Heather. Hi, Heather. Um, she hi, asked, Heather. is, is there a backstory with the shark head in the background? So I, I, for a long time, I had a shark head in the background. It'll be back there. I just, uh, we were painting the foam head. Um, she, the, the backstory of the, the shark head is I have a weekly bad movie night with friends online and we watched a movie called sharks of the corn in which the, the villain was just a, basically a guy wearing that shark head. Like that shark head was one of the actual monsters. Like they thought it was like, Oh, this is a real shark. And it was just that that mask, and I was like, I can get this on Amazon. I'm gonna buy it, so I bought it. Mm. <laughs> That's you know, so that that was it. Um, she also asked, also, will there ever be a We Have Issues pod? Uh, will there ever be We Have Issues hoodies for sale? Good question. Do we have hoodies on the? Uh, no, but maybe the make them. Do you, you can make them available. Though. You have all the the designs, right? I can. I didn't. I didn't realize they weren't available on T Public. I'll go check T Public, and I'll I'll try to I'll get those available this week. That's what I'll do. But thank you, Heather. Um. So, Vimker asked, "Are there any specific brands of coloring instruments, pens, that you would recommend for comic work? Um, Copic markers are really good." Uh, yeah, if you're gonna actually color like on paper, Copic yeah. is definitely the best way to go. Yeah. Uh, Micron Prisma. pens are 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 very solid. Oh, There's great. this one pen I forget what it's called. I can try to comment it after this video is published. Mm-hmm. Um, but there it, it it's like a brush pen, but you can cool. like draw the smallest lines with it or the widest lines at the oh. same time. It's like you don't have to switch between different pen sizes. But Micron's the go to. I mean, that's the that's your that's your bread and butter. That's gonna be. You're solid, you know. I haven't used traditional media yeah. in a while, yeah. except when I'm sketching. But like, yeah, like Micron for the inks and such, and then like Copic markers, Prismacolors. Um, if you want, you use Posca, but not necessarily. I mean, those are like cool paint pens. But like, I, I think mm-hmm. Copics are really cool. Um, Gwen, Gwen, first of all, Gwen, I love you so much. Thank you for asking anything at all. But she said, "What about personal monster questions?" So she she wants us to go through this uh, BuzzFeed quiz and see what kind of monster we are. We should do that next week. Next week, we'll do like a whole like monster segment. Like instead of like monster test, we'll be like, what monster? We do a monster test. What are we? Okay, we'll do that next week because that's like a longer thing. Should we it's- take the test beforehand and go go into that segment with the knowledge of what monster we are? Or should we take the test together? We can take it online together and not tell each other our answer. I don't know. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll figure it out next okay. week. It'll, it'll be a fun segment. But we'll do that for you next week um, because it's getting super late. Let's see. Tricks. Hi, Tricks. Uh, Tricks uh, asked, Tricks. In, in, the credits, in the credits montage, there are a few shots of both of you in the same room at the same time. Can we look forward to both hosts in the same place from time to time, maybe for episode 200? We try. Uh, I, I, I would love that. Uh, we should. We really should get together one weekend and just film, like, a random episode. You know? Like, we should just... We need to. I need to hang out we with should, you. We should film like a mockumentary, like office, uh, what we do in the dark, what we do in the shadows, shadows style. Yeah, we should. We should. Actually, um, I, I was asked uh, by Fowler to make a video about like songwriting and stuff. And I think like when you and I get together, like, there have been so many times where like I'll write a song and I'll bring it to you and you're like, and you come up with a, a like a, a solo thing and it just makes the song a hundred times better. And I'm like, just look, changes it. We did it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it really is just vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, really wish, just... I wish there was more, I wish there was more math involved. Yeah. There. It's so funny. So I was like, yeah, we, we should record. Like, let's get together. We'll record stuff. We need to anyway. Paige asked, did you answer any of my questions from last week? If not, I resubmit them. We asked, we asked all of them, Paige. How dare. 
How dare we did answer all of them? I'm we answered sure. all of them. Yeah. Um. We yeah we answered every every question from last week actually. Uh. But thank you all for asking questions. Thank you for participating. If you made it this far in the video, thank you. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please subscribe. Please hit the button. It would really mean a lot to us. Uh. We we we, we can we can use the help. Uh. Make sure you uh, you know share the link with all of your friends and all that stuff. I'm not gonna edit a lot of this episode because it's super late. I'm gonna just chop up little bits here oh, and there. I'm just going to hope for the best because honestly, our, our view counts have been kind of low anyway. And like, nah, to, to deal with it. Hopefully you all like this uh, kind of loose, loosey goosey episode. But anyway, thank you all. Um, Steven, what are you doing this week before we go? I'm going to keep plugging on the pages. I'm doing great. I'm going to keep doing great. Heck yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to look over my outline and if it feels, I feels, it feels pretty good. I'm going to look over it. And if, if, if I really like it, I'm going to try to write two pages. That's I'm going to just go like every week I'm going to write. I'm, I, I like to like aim low and then like, you know, like, you know, under promise over perform sort of thing mm-hmm. is that's, you know, it's my always, bread and butter. Exactly. It feels good. Um, but, but thank you all. Thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate you. We love the heck out of you. If you have any questions for us, you can post them in the comments below. You can also meet us, like, you know, just go meet us, talk to us on social media. Uh, Steven's at Stevie Wildcard, right? On, mm-hmm. on on Twitter, X, whatever. I'm at Anthony Lafusi. You can find the podcast at We Have Issues Pod. And just feel free to talk to us. Let us know what you think of the show. Let us know if you have any requests, suggestions. Be nice. Just be nice. <laughs> be kind, please. <laughs> no, but, but we do love you. And be we awesome you. to one another. Be excellent to one another. Exactly. Yeah, excellent, yeah. Um, Steven, you have anything you want to say to the people? I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in and, you know, supporting us and being great friends. Um, I hope you all have wonderful weeks. And I am Stevie Wildcard. <laughs> I'm Anthony. And this has been We Have Issues. We'll see you next time. Boom! Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> boom, 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 He's in the Zoom. He's ready to, to Zoom with me. That's what he says. I don't know. So he says, he's not here now. Freaking, freaking lies. Lies, lies from tiny eyes, Steven. I see it. I see. Okay, he's in here now. He's coming. He's. <clears throat> he's, he's connecting to audio. Not video, though. He's, he's just. There's no Steven. This is a tragedy. There he is. There you are. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Dude, it's so funny. It's so funny that you did that, though, because like right before uh, right before you said you were on, I was playing with the different audio settings. Oh, true that. And it was so funny that you did that, dude, because like um, I was doing the there's a thing. It says original sound for musicians. So it doesn't buffer out the guitar. Oh, okay. Yeah, because like if like right now, if you tried to play guitar, it would muffle it so bad that you it sounds terrible. It sounds like it sounds like failing at Guitar Hero, like all those like muffs that it, happen. It would be like this is not a human's voice, so therefore it is nothing. Yes. And like, dude, it's so like it's impressive how good it is at like truncating the sound because it's like you hear it for half a second and then it just kills it. So you hear the like singing, but not the guitar. So I was like, there has to be a way to fix this. And I Okay, apparently there's a thing called original sound for musicians where you just put that on and it cancels out all of those little buffers which is pretty cool really yeah but That's i awesome so, yeah so i had that on and then like but then i shut it off and then you were like i was like oh no i can't <laughs> somehow i can't i speak in, i speak an instrument <laughs> you are music steven you are poetry <laughs> oh man um <clears throat> chaz michaels michaels is guitar <laughs> yes